When writing a fantasy or sci-fi story about people with powers, it is incredibly important to have a well-developed magic system that suits your style of storytelling. First, you have Hard Magic, a series where the author explicitly states what the characters are capable of, how the system works, and what the limitations are. In Full Metal Alchemist, magic is called alchemy, a science that follows the laws of equivalent Exchange. The best non-spoiler example of this is when Alphonse Elric fixes a broken radio early in the series. All the pieces of the radio are there, and he creates absolutely nothing. He just rearranges the matter and the parts of the radio into a working one. Alchemy never breaks this rule. One of the best parts of watching Fullmetal Alchemist is using your understanding of science to try to figure out what the characters are capable of doing. Another great example of this is Avatar The Last Airbender. Each person is able to bend one of the four elements, earth, fire, air, or water. However, only the Avatar can bend all four. And only firebenders can create fire out of nothing. Everybody else must use whatever element they have around them to bend. This allows the audience to really think and theorize properly about what is happening in the story. The audience can try to figure out themselves whether or not bending metal due to having Earth's minerals in metal is possible. The downside to a hard magicism is that it's incredibly predictable. Assuming the author sticks to the established rules, it is very difficult for the author to surprise the audience if the audience has a full understanding of what all the characters are capable of doing. Soft magic can literally do anything that the author wants it to do, while hard magic is very predictable. However, hard magic isn't always predictable. What most authors like to do is put in consequences to disobeying the laws of said magic system. In other words, the characters are able to do it, but it has disastrous consequences. For example, in Naruto, ninja have a certain amount of chakra, and the techniques they use, known as jitsu, require a certain amount of chakra. If they use all of their chakra up, they will die. For some authors, this is a really good thing. It gives them limitations that stop them from being able to make bad writing decisions. It makes the author really think about how the character will solve their problems, and when they come up with an incredibly creative, strategic solution to it, they can throw the audience for a loop with their creativity. They have to come up with a way to use this magic system while still following the rules in a creative way that the audience would never expect. And that's a lot of fun to read. With these limitations, you can also put limitations on how powerful characters can become putting a limit on the power creep of your story, potentially saving it long term. My Hero Academia does this amazingly well. Introducing a hard magic system with clear defined limits for what people are capable of, and making it very clear that All Might is the end goal. At the end of the series, Izuku Midoriya, the main character, will be a little bit stronger than All Might, but he's definitely not going to be destroying a galaxy. Then there's soft magic, where the only rules that exist are likely there to explain why certain characters don't do certain things. For example, the reason that magic in Harry Potter can't bring back dead people is obviously because that would undo the entire tragedy of the main character backstory. The downside to soft magic is that both audience and reader knows pretty much nothing about what the character is capable of doing. However, it also makes it easier to create a different sort of tension. The audience never knows whether or not a character is in danger. For all the audience knows, that character could have a magic spell up his sleeve that could solve the problem, or maybe he doesn't. The problem with soft magic is when something weird happens in the story, the audience feels like the author is just looking at you, shrugging your soldiers like, I don't know what happened. It's magic. Who cares? The problem with this is that this happens at a crucial time when the characters are in mortal peril. It destroys the sense of danger and threat of death in your story. The moment you give your characters the ability to magic away the enemy is the moment you lose all sense of tension in your narrative. However, most writers get around this by giving individual characters mental blocks or limitations. The best example of this is Harry Potter, where the main cast can theoretically do anything, 
However, their skill set is limited to the skills they have learned over the course of the story. While there isn't a set limit to what the magic in the universe is capable of, there is a set to limit to what kind of magic each one of the individual characters can perform due to their skill with magic. This stops the author from being able to easily say magic did it as the answer to everything because they do need to go to extra mile to explain how that character learn to perform that specific spell. But there's more to a magic system than how it is implemented into a story. No, what is the effect of said magic system on the rest of the universe? When everybody in the world has some sort of special power, it has to be affected that the structure of a government and society would be different. In My Hero Academia, 80% of the world's population has superpowers. So that begs the question, what happened to the police officers? Well, they all decided that they would not use their quirks egg weapons in order to maintain the static quo. However, with 80% of the world having superpowers, there were obviously people that wanted to use those powers for bad purposes, like hurting others. So a new occupation began, an occupation of people calling themselves heroes that were paid to save the lives of other people. In this universe, there are heroes that are rated R, that are models, and heroes that are specifically designated for certain types of situations such as natural disasters. Unlike most Western comics, all these heroes work as members of the government. They call them pro-heroes. And with being a pro hero being an actual occupation, kids are able to go to school where they learn how to be pro heroes. Events involving quirk competition quickly overtook old games such as the Olympics. This is massively important for making your fictional world believable. A magic system determines how an author will solve their problems in their story. So having a good magic system is important because without one, the solution to problems in your story may not satisfy your fan base. Now it is possible to get around this depending on the type of theory you're writing by making something really cool and flashy because a lot of people will buy into things looking cool and will then believe even the most ridiculous, stupid, and illogical explanation you give them. However, this is incredibly cheap and you will get called out on it and you could end up ruining your entire franchise if you do this. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe. Tell me your thoughts on magic systems and what the best magic system you've ever seen is in the comment section down below. And above all else guys, have a great day.